In education, a curriculum is broadly defined as the totality of student experiences that occur in the educational process. This term often refers specifically to a planned sequence of instruction or to a view of the student's experiences in terms of the educator's or school's instructional rules. Now, let us define the term curriculum using the definition given by the different people. The term curriculum was derived from a Latin word curere, which means a race course or a runway, which one runs to reach a goal. Accordingly, a curriculum is the instructional and educative program in which by following the curriculum, the pupils will achieve their goals, ideals, and aspirations in life. So there are two perspectives or views of curriculum. The first one is traditional curriculum wherein it is a subject-centered and the second one is the modern curriculum wherein it is child and life-centered. So we will focus on the discussion of the modern curriculum. Modern education is the combination of two dynamic processes. First is the process of individual development, wherein the developmental milestone and developmentally appropriate practices are being taken into consideration while making the modern curriculum. And the second one is the process of socialization, wherein there are uh, a lot of activities related to um, socialization of the students. The activities included in the cur curriculum are more cooperative and collaborative. The second definition was given by Cunningham. Curriculum is a tool in the hands of the artist to mold his material according to his ideas in his studio wherein the artist refers to the teacher and the material refers to the pupils and ideas refer to aims and objectives and the studio refers to the school. According to Morrow, curriculum includes all those activities which are utilized by the school to attain the aims of education. According to Crow and Crow, curriculum includes all the learners' experience in or outside school that are included in a program which has been devised to help him developmentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, and morally. Therefore, um, the view of curriculum in this definition is the totality of the learning experiences of the students. For the last definition, it was given by T.P. Nunn. The curriculum should be viewed as various forms of activities that are grand expressions of human spirit and that are of the greatest and most permanent significance to the world. Let us now identify the different types of curriculum. Explicit curriculum refers to the plan for learning set by a teacher or the school. A class explicit curriculum is what that class is designed to teach. This includes the topics covered by the class and any documents included in the lesson plan such as textbooks, films, and other resources. An 
implicit curriculum is one that is crafted within the thinking processes of individual teachers but not written down or published. Therefore, it will not be able to be replicated by others. So these are the school culture, behaviors, and attitudes. Next is the null curriculum. It refers to what students do not have the opportunity to learn. In this case, students are learning something based on the absence of certain experiences, interactions, and discourses in the classroom. So, we say this is null curriculum when a topic is never taught because it is too unimportant or it is too controversial or it is too uh, inappropriate or it is not essential. Extracurriculars or anything you do outside of academics. This can include sports, music, community service activities, internships, clubs, and more. Let us now move on to the scope of curriculum. First is the goals, the benchmarks or expectations for teaching and learning, often made explicit in the form of a scope and sequence of skills to be addressed. Next, next is the methods. The specific instructional methods for the teacher, often described in a teacher's edition. So it refers to how the teacher will discuss the lesson, what strategies the teacher will use. The third one is the material. The media and tools that are used for teaching and learning. And next is the assessment, the reasons for and methods of measuring student progress. It is very significant scope of the curriculum because it is where we found out, where can we found out if the teaching and learning process is successful or not. Now, let us discuss the nature of curriculum. First, the instructional program as indicated by the course offerings to meet the various requirements of a vast heterogeneous population. So, when we say heterogeneous population, it refers to the individual differences of our students inside the classroom. Number two, the courses of study embodying outlines of knowledge to be taught. The third, all the experiences provided under the guidance of the school. Now, let's talk about some issues in the curriculum. Scope, it relates to what should be taught or learned. It also refers to the breadth of curriculum, the content, learning experiences, and activities to be included in the curriculum. These are the questions to be addressed when we are doing the scope and sequence of our curriculum. First question, what do young people need in order to succeed in the society? Second, what are the needs of the locality, society, nation, and world? Lastly, 
what are the essentials of the discipline. Next is the sequence. It relates to when different parts of the curriculum should be learned with respect to other parts of the curriculum. So how do we do sequencing? From simple to complex, easy to difficult, prerequisite learning, whole to parts, and parts to whole. Next, chronological, developmental, close to far away, easy to difficult, and known to unknown. Next is the integration. It relates to how different strands of a piece of curriculum relate to other things. So we should integrate the following. Cognitive, affective, and psychomotor objectives and abilities. The knowledge and experience the objectives, and the content. Lastly, the child's activity and needs with the society's need and activity. It should be related to the social environment of the students. So next is the continuity. It relates to how previous learning and future learning relate in terms of cumulative effects of learning. Let's now go to the curriculum development. Curriculum development is a comprehensive, ongoing, and cyclical process. It aims to determine the needs of a group of learners. It aims to develop objectives for a program to address those needs. It aims to determine an appropriate syllabus, course structure, teaching methods, and materials. Why is curriculum development important? Curriculum development is important for the assessment of educational needs, formulation of objectives, and selection and organization of content. It is also important in the selection and organization of learning experiences and the evaluation of content and learning experiences. There are four determinants of the curriculum. Individual needs, cultural change, social change, and the value system. first determinant of the curriculum is the individual needs. The curriculum is determined by the needs of the learner for physical, intellectual, social, moral, and aesthetic development. A holistic development of the learner is possible through a curriculum. Therefore, the needs of the learner is a major determinant of the curriculum. Next determinant of the curriculum is the culture. It is the totality of one's customs, norms, 
values, beliefs, techniques, and practices that characterize social living. It is an important determinant of curriculum. Those beliefs and norms held by and propagated by a society is instrumental in deciding the different aspects of the curriculum. Culture is therefore a very significant force in deciding the experiences that are to be included in the curriculum. Next determinant of the curriculum is the social change. A change in the lifestyle of a group, a community, or society is called social change. It includes technological changes, economic changes, political changes, and changes in values. The technological changes cause change in the style of living, therefore, influences the curriculum accordingly. Economic changes demand innovation in curriculum by bringing about change in occupational structure. Political changes have an impact on curricula. The policies of the government decide the core features of a curriculum. Last determinant of the curriculum is the value system. Values play a crucial part in the formulation and implementation of educational ideologies. Generally, two kinds of values enter into curriculum making. The first types or kind of values is the ultimate values that determine the aims and purposes of education. So these are happiness, truth, beauty, and goodness. On the other hand, instrumental values that are related to the means of education. So, the examples include being polite, obedient, and self-controlled.